Welcome! In this video, we are going to solve a quadratic equation using a very powerful tool known as the quadratic formula. All right? Now, there's a few things you want to do before you actually use the formula, and one of those is actually set up your equation so that it is equal to zero. And also, another thing you want to do is make sure that your powers on the variables are in descending order. Okay? So, as we work with this one, watch as my first few steps are actually just getting it ready. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is move my 7x to the other side. And then I want to write my powers of x in descending order. That means I'll start with 6x squared, then write my minus 7x, followed by my 5 equals 0. So I have x squared, x to the first, and no x's. Now, once you have your quadratic equation in this form, now you can apply the quadratic formula. And here's what that formula is. It's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that will give us our solutions, x. All right? Now, if we're going to use this, we need to figure out what our a, b, and c are in the equation. Now, these are basically the coefficients in front of your variables. The one in front of x squared is your a. The one in front of x is b, and the one without an x, that is the c. Now keep in mind that if any of these have a sign on them, positive or negative, that you take that as well. All right, so a is 6, b is negative 7, and c is 5. Well, let's take all of those values and plug them into the formula. Let's see what we get. So I want a negative, negative 7, plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squared minus 4 times 6 times 5 all over 2 times 6. Now you'll notice that when I substitute something in I like to put parentheses around it. This really helps me keep track of a lot of my signs. Alright, so this will give us our solutions for x. Now all we got to do is simplify it as best we can. Let's be really careful with our signs and just take it a little bit at a time. So negative, negative 7 becomes a positive 7. Let's see, inside the square root, I have negative 7 squared, so a 49. Then I have 4 times 6 times 5, looks like about 120, all over 12. All right. Looks a little bit better, but we can simplify that root even just a little bit more. So let's do that. So 7 plus or minus the square root. Uh, 49 minus 120. Let's see, I'm going to say a negative 71 all over 12. All right, it's looking pretty good. And when you're working with this, sometimes you can simplify that root a little bit more. In our particular one, we have a negative underneath the root. So I'm going to write this as a negative 1 times a 71. Now the reason why I'm doing this is I want to imagine taking the square root of 71 and the square root of negative 1. In this way I can keep track of my imaginary number. So that i represents the square root of negative 1. And when I take the square root of it, I write that i outside of my square root. All right. So I can't simplify my square root anymore, so I'm basically done. So this represents both of my solutions for x. I, I say 2 because 1 is where we take care of the plus. So we imagine it as 7 plus the square root of 71i all over 12. And the other solution is 7 minus the square root of 71i all over 12. And there you go. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.